85 to 90 percent of human diseases are related to mitochondrial origin. The evolution of light doesn't equal the evolution built into your cells. There is an issue in the eye. Your eye is predominantly something we use to see as we're doing right now. But there's this other thing that I learned about in neurosurgery called the clock. It's called the supracosmatic nucleus. Most of you probably heard it. It's the main circadian oscillator. And I started to wonder, is there a difference based in these frequencies between these two systems in the eye and how do they somehow link? Light is capable of altering DNA when you're obese. Maybe your main, main problem is you're not getting enough sunlight and it has nothing to do with food. So it's all tied to photosynthesis and if you don't know anything about light, you don't know anything about food. I'm gonna tell you exactly how it really works. This is Dr. Jack Cruz. I'm sure you saw him on different podcasts. He reveals that everything you believe about food is a falsehood. In 2012, his TED talk was banned. Listen carefully what he reveals. In 1900, colon cancer was the 37th leading cause of death in the United States. Today, it's number two. So if you believe in Darwin's paradigm, explain to me how in five generations we went from 37 to two. It's impossible. But guess what makes it possible? The evolution of light doesn't equal the evolution built into your cells. What's the key in this picture? Red balances blue. Don't forget that. You guys have heard from all your food gurus that you've heard previously talk in all these other years about tryptophan, about tyrosine, about phenylalanine, and histidine. But you know what you don't know about? aromatic amino acids, they all absorb UV light. Did you know that? The eye is loaded with these amino acids specifically. So that raised a question, why is this? I found out from physics that a benzene ring, which is in every single aromatic amino acid, is a photon trap. And they absorb all frequencies of UV light. So guess what that means? That 250 to 380 is absorbed by this. That's the reason why we don't see it, because it's designed to do something different. Every protein in your body is hydrated, okay? Zinc cannot bind to a protein in the way you were told earlier today. When you live in an environment today, you don't have as many alpha waves. Why? Because non-native EMF, what's the number one effect, which you'll learn about later, dehydrates your cells because it lowers your redox potential in your mitochondria. In other words, original slide, you can't make as much water from your own mitochondria. That's where the dehydration comes. Simple biohack at home, take a piece of steak that you have left over, throw it in the microwave, taste it. What does it taste like? Shoe leather. Why? What do microwaves do? They vibrate and rotate water really fast. It heats up and it dehydrates the meat. It's happening to you right now here in Vermont. It's happening to all of us because of these shitty lights that we have. 42% of sunlight that falls to earth is infrared A light. It's balanced all the time by blue, okay? Especially when the sun rises. Blue light bends the most by gravitational lensing. It turns out this is important in the eye because when blue light comes through, it falls in front of the retina. That's the reason why when you use a computer screen or you use these horrible lights up here, you get visual obscuration. In other words, your vision gets worse. What does that cause? It causes you elongation of your eyeball. When your eyeball gets longer, you get myopia. What happens when you get myopia, the next step, is you get retinal detachments. What's the end result? Acute macular degeneration. Any, anybody know anybody who's got that? Lots of people, and guess what else? Guess what causes cataracts? Blue light toxicity, why? The brain is trying to protect itself from this light that's coming in, so it makes the lens hazy, so this doesn't happen. But why is it important to a mitochondria? In 2009, we had some really cool researchers that found out there's another opsin in the eye. And that opsin works with the retinal ganglion cells, and that's called melanopsin. Melanopsin is the hormone that runs the central retinal pathways in the eye. And it turns out they're really important at nighttime, and they link to melatonin, but not in the way most people think. The fovea is where the rest of the visual light spectrum fall, and it falls right here. Why? That's acute vision. That's your camera focus. That's what the ophthalmologist all pay attention to. I'm gonna make a very controversial statement now for many people in this room. The central retinal pathway energizes everything distal to it. So let me explain that to you. It basically turns on your pituitary gland and it turns on everything distal in the human brain. And I'm gonna show you how. This gentleman, his name is Fritz Hallwich. He was an ophthalmologist in Germany. He was born in the 1920s. He happened to live in a time where we didn't have intraocular lenses. 
this doctor actually practiced medicine in a time that we could never recapitulate now. That's why sometimes looking back is a good thing. I started to find papers about this, this energetic pathway that has huge effects on growth and metabolism through the eye. You didn't hear me say gut. You didn't hear me say food, did you? Turns out that Hallwich did something rather remarkable. He basically took cataracts out of people and then noticed and watched them and saw that their growth and metabolism improved tremendously. They started to lose weight. They started to feel better. They started to sleep better. And he documented it all. And guess what? He didn't just do it in humans. He did it in all kinds of animals. So in other words, light was able to make chemicals in us that weren't there before. Doesn't that sound a lot like E equals MC squared? What does that equation mean to everybody? Energy and mass are exactly the same thing. The only thing that's different is the environment that each side of the equation is in. This means that when you slow light down, you create things of mass. That means everything in this room, this farm, this planet, at one time used to be light. That was Einstein's innovation. When I get done, you'll understand why. Because it raises our dopamine level. The best and fastest way to raise your dopamine level is through AM sunlight. One of the cells in the eye called the retinal pigmentum epithelium at the base of the eye has melanin granules that absorb what? UV light, because it's made out of those things that we talked about rotates faster, and guess what it makes? What Ruben talked about, a DC electric current in the eye. This is what I want you to focus in on. Light slows, energy is lost, the pituitary gets bigger. Everybody in this room believe that people get fatter because they eat too much. Turns out it's exactly the opposite. When you sprain your ankle, does your ankle get bigger or smaller? When you have heart failure, does your heart get bigger or smaller? Here's the third one. When the star in the sky dies, does it get bigger or smaller? So everything that loses energy in the universe gets bigger. What did Hallwich tell us? Hallwich showed that when light slows, the pituitary gets bigger. You know why it's getting bigger? Because light is getting turned into chemicals that you call hormones that go in to the nuclear DNA to change it. Guess what that means? That means light is capable of altering DNA, it also means that light is capable of potentially reversing my previous problem. Meaning that when you're obese, maybe your main, main problem is you're not getting enough sunlight and it has nothing to do with food. You have two loops in the eye. One loop's called the short loop, the other one's called the long loop. And what it does, it recycles DHA constantly as light comes through. It's coupled to vitamin A, which you're gonna hear about later and I'm gonna tell you why that's important. But the key thing that I realized, Bazan taught me, that this central retinal pathway and the retina had more DHA in it than any other part of the brain. Turns out that the clock here has to run faster than all the other clocks in the rest of your body. If it doesn't, it doesn't work. So if you have an iPhone and you use it to go to a restaurant, the clock that's up in the sky, in, up there has to run 38 microseconds faster than the one in your iPhone. Otherwise, you're gonna be 100 kilometers off. That would not work. Turns out in your eye, the exact same thing happens. And the reason why DHA in the eye is important because this DC electric current runs faster than every other part of your body. That's the reason why DHA is important. And it turns out when you have too much blue light, because blue light is the antidote for vitamin A and for DHA, do you know why? What kind of light makes vitamin A? What's the complementary color to blue? Yellow. And guess what? Vitamin A is yellow. That's the link between this. Light frequencies control the level of vitamin A in the eye. And also, every opsin in the body is tied to retinol, to vitamin A. There's not an opsin in the human body that's not tied to it. That's the reason why that when you have deficiencies of vitamin A, it's tied to obesity. And nobody has told you why. I'm telling you why right now. Because you're blue light toxic. Blue light makes you fat really fat, and it starts right here. And it ruins this bazon effect. And the crazy thing about the long loop, the way you recycle DHA, this is the way it works. When photosynthesis makes it in the, in the sea, in plankton, it's mostly in the SN1 and the SN3 position. SN1 and SN3 get changed when the fish eat it and the fish change it to SN2. What does SN2 mean? It means that it becomes planar, like a semiconductive plane which is important in the eye. That's the reason why taking algae when you're a vegan is idiotic, because there's not enough in there. You need the seafood to make the molecular change, okay? 
And there's papers out there that show that SN2 is the only thing that gets into the central and peripheral nervous system of eukaryotes, which everybody in this room is. The reason why this is not equal is because the evolution of light does not equal the evolution of our retinal anatomy. I started to put this together pretty quick. Then I started to look at sunrise and sunset. When the sun rises, you have visible and infrared light. You don't have any UV initially. But guess what else happens at this time? You don't need your rods and you don't need melanopsin in the morning. So guess when they regenerate? They regenerate in the AM. Guess what else happens? You actually make melatonin in your eye in the morning. The hormone of darkness is first made in the human body in the eye. In the morning, when you have a combination of UVA and infrared A light. And the reason for you is what I told you before about the aromatic amino acid that absorbs that. And you see that UVA light doesn't show up here. You need to reconstruct your AM to fix your real problem. And that was what I had to do to my surgery schedule. That's why I stopped operating at 7 a.m. Started all my cases at 8.30. It's also the reason why I moved to the 28th latitude from where I lived. Why? Because UVA light shows up. So guess what that means? You need more control of your life in the morning than any other time. That's the practical advice, okay? These are not Jack Cruz's rules. These are the sun's rules. Sunset, this is when you don't need color vision. This is the camera. They regenerate at nighttime. There's another opsin that you may not know about. It's called neuropsin. It's on the cornea of the eye and it's on your skin. It's a UVA light detector. So if the ophthalmologists are right, why don't you ask them, well, why do we have a UVA light receptor in our eye if it's really bad for us? Well, it turns out this is gonna be really important right now. Melatonin is considered the hormone of darkness. Well, guess what? That neuropsin tells the brain that UVA light is present and it can begin to make melatonin from sunlight. Here's the quantum paradox. It's a, a nighttime hormone because that's what the functional medicine doctors in my profession have told you. And that's true because that's when it's active, but it only activates when light is not present, but it's remade first in the eye and then generalizes all along the brain. The other key thing, and I'll just point this out to you right here. This one should open everybody's eyes. It reduces energy production in mitochondria. UVA light turns down energy production. And why is that important? There's a, for, the fourth cytochrome is cytochrome C oxidase in everybody's mitochondria in here. Anybody wanna guess what kind of light turns it on? Red light. UV light turns it off. And the reason why, what does UV light make in the skin or the eye? Nitric oxide. And guess what? That's why UV light lowers your blood pressure because it causes 40 to 60% of dermal pooling and it helps your heart. But what people don't realize, the effect is, it turns off your ability to make ATP from food electrons. It has a lot of other effects. One of these, if you have breast cancer or prostate cancer, you may wanna pay attention to that one because it affects the aromatase enzyme. That's the reason why breast cancer is through the roof. You need to get your body parts out in the sun. So for those of you who don't believe, this is just from May 19th. This was a study that came out Look what it said, morning daylight exposure tied to better sleep. Taking melatonin is a great way to ruin sleep. You have this direct loop that goes to the pineal gland, but the energy comes in here. This energy has to be balanced, blue and red. What does this first do? It turns your pituitary gland on. Blue light balanced by red is what turns on hormone production. If you look at a circadian mechanism, all the hormones are made usually from six to 10 in almost med any medical textbook. They're assuming that you live around the 30th latitude. That's not true. It's different at different places, but it's a key. Anybody want a shocker? What turns off hormone production? UVA light on the skin, first time it shows up. UV light is what turns off in your blood plasma. But here's this other part right here. Life, life tends to also use the 7.83 hertz because that's what runs the uh, EEGs and the alpha waves in your brain. But here's the funny part. Modern life is right here. And life is not designed to use any of these. And these are all the things down here that do it. What happens when you use these? You lose the alpha wave in the brain. Become the sphinx. 
The Sphinx looks to the east every morning with all four extremities grounded. That is the best way to retrain the circadian oscillator in your body, through your eye, while you're grounded.